What's the scariest science fact that the public knows nothing about? Scientists were trying to study the effects that microplastics have on the human body and brain, but were unable to draw any reasonable conclusions because they could not find a control group. User replies. Resistance is futile. User replies. Something similar happened when they tried testing for lead back in the day. The ultra-clean labs we have today were originally designed so, for this reason. Also, the investigation into lead also led to the discovery of the age of the Earth. User replies. Similarly, sunken World War II and earlier ships have been scavenged for steel that doesn't contain any radioactive isotopes. With atmospheric nuclear tests, all other steel is lightly radioactive due to all the radiation in the atmosphere. However, due to the atmospheric test ban, levels have fallen low enough that very few applications still need pre-atomic steel. Scientific literature conclusion on Alzheimer's disease and other neurodegenerative diseases in general is that the diseases start decades before the first obvious symptoms and that we need to treat them at this stage. When you exhibit obvious symptoms, it's too late, your brain is already mush. If you get diagnosed with Alzheimer's at 65, you had the disease since your early 40s at least. And you experienced very mild symptoms but didn't notice it. And your brain fought like hell to compensate the deficit. When you get diagnosed, your brain is already very severely damaged and will never recover from the deficit. User replies. Do we have a way of detecting it that early? Like, could we be testing all people in their 30s and 40s like colonoscopies? User replies. Work is ongoing. I'm participating in a research where every year we do some verbal tests, like repeating some simple words, and computers analyze the recordings. When the brain starts to go bad these sounds are supposed to be the first to change, and the idea is to have enough recordings to be able to recognize the first signs. I'm sure there are plenty of people who know this, but personally I find it terrifying as duck. If the vacuum of space didn't block sound from reaching us, the sun would be as loud as a jackhammer everywhere on Earth. Everywhere, at all times. And because sound travels slower than light, if the sun were to go out, it would take 8 minutes for the light to stop but 13 years for the sound to stop. So life on a cold, dead earth for 13 years and still hearing the jackhammer scream of our dead sun. User replies. I've heard the first part of this, however I have not heard about the screaming for 13 years in complete darkness part. Terrifying indeed. The actual amount of crude oil that's been pumped directly into the ocean. BP had high definition 4K live footage of the pipe that ruptured and chose to censor it. And it's not just BP that's had an incident like that. User replies. What the duck is Boston Pizza doing to our ducking oceans? User replies. Didn't a documentary out there say that the BP incident was the best thing that happened to the Gulf? Fish populations exploded because we stopped commercial fishing for a while. Until we obviously started back up again. User replies. World War II had a similar effect. Less commercial fishing, due to naval war lead to a quick rebound of fish populations. Insect population depletion. User replies. I see this one often. I'm a truck driver. Have spent a lot of time on country highways. Ten-ish years ago, I'd park the truck at night and the windshield would look like I drove through a slaughterhouse sometimes. That hasn't happened in several years now. Also roadkill is noticeably less. At first glance that seems like a good thing. But where'd they go? User replies. Pesticides have wreaked havoc on insect populations globally. As for roadkill, combination of biodiversity decreasing globally, but also the simple fact that the animals near the road at risk of becoming roadkill have all slowly been killed off and there just hasn't been enough population growth to cover that deficit. Our bodies have no way of knowing that we're breathing oxygen. 
If I could snap my fingers and replace all the oxygen in your room with another inert gas, you wouldn't notice. You wouldn't start to choke or struggle. You'd just get sleepier and sleepier until you die. That's why carbon monoxide is so dangerous. If you have any sort of gas appliance in your building, invest in a detector. User replies. I'll never forget being out for dinner and getting a message from my roommate saying, her and her boyfriend were in our apartment and starting to feel weird and tired. I told her to get out as soon as possible and call 911. Thankfully she did and everyone was okay. The gas company measured our gas furnace at over 220 parts per million of carbon monoxide, and the utility space was a few feet away from my roommate's bedroom. Still makes me feel nauseous to think about. Tetraethyl lead raised worldwide lead levels so significantly, they had to drill into Arctic ice to find an incontaminated sample. User replies. Where it came from is the really scary part. Humans, like the morons they are, mixed tetraethyl lead into fuel and burned it for over 70 years by the billions of tons. You already made it halfway through the video. Let me know your thoughts in the comments and don't forget to subscribe. Let's continue. There are millions and billions of dollars in research into how to make people buy crap. The missus took a year of psychology and what they got the most research on is how to manipulate you and me into buying crap we don't need. Mental illness we know a little about. Making you want the new crap that you don't need? We know a hell of a lot about how that works. By the time AIDS was first discovered in the United States in 1981, 250,000 Americans were already infected with HIV. User replies. On the other side, one thing that not enough people know about is how significant the progress we've made in HIV treatment has been. Treatment is so good that people infected with it can get to the point where they can't even transmit it anymore. And if you're in a high-risk group, like gay men, you can go on a drug that will literally make it impossible for you to catch it, even if the other person is not being treated. Brain aneurysms can happen at any time, to anyone. No matter what age you are, or even how healthy you are, if you are currently alive, you have a chance of getting a brain aneurysm. When you do get one, there's a 50% chance you'll just die immediately. Like, you'd be alive one minute, and then lying on the floor unconscious the next minute. Are the chances of actually getting a brain aneurysm at any random moment low? Yes but it's still not zero. User replies. This happened to someone I worked with. We were both working in the office, he stood up, cried in pain then crumpled to the floor, dead before the ambulance got to him. User replies. They really hurt, bad. I had one rupture when I sat up in bed. Felt like someone hit me in the back of the head with a bat. Staggered to the living room and sat down, until I started losing vision puked and passed out. The real pain came later when the blood that leaks into your brain causes massive irritation on the long of the braining and your brain convulses. Light hurts your eyes so bad. I was on fentanyl and morphine. Pain, worse than when I had second and third degree burns on 20% of my body. We all get cancer. But most are so little and small they can't and won't hurt us. Take an Astronomy 101 course at your local community college. People have no idea the amount of and variety of things that exist in space, that can and do happen, that would send us back to the Stone Age or outright annihilate life on Earth. I'm not talking asteroids, comets, and solar flares, everyone knows those, I'm talking supernovas, gamma ray bursts, wandering planets, wandering back holes, and more. And none of it do we have any ounce of control over. The good thing is the galaxy and universe are unbelievably large, so our chances of being affected by these things are, quite literally, astronomically low, but it ain't zero. The first contraceptive pill was never tested on women. They tested it on men instead. 
User replies. I could believe that. I'm a medicinal chemist and the history of my field is full of skeletons and bats hit ideas. CO2 levels are causing the pH levels in the ocean to move towards an acidic level. No, not like burn yourself acid, but just enough that it's causing an already noticeable impact to microorganisms at the bottom of the food chain. This may eventually lead to an ecological collapse. It seems to be impacting phytoplankton, which is responsible for producing a good chunk of the air you breath as well. If the oceans go anaerobic the atmosphere would become toxic. A similar event has occurred during one or two of the past mass extinction events. Swimming in freshwater could expose you to Negleria fowleri, a brain-eating amoeba, that is fatal 97% of the time and is almost impossible to treat effectively. If an electrical line is damaged and is in contact with the floor, even walking away from it with big steps can cause a huge electrical potential difference between your feet and kill you. Alcohol increases the permeability of the blood-brain barrier by unpredictable factors, which is why people die from overdose on their normal drug dosages. Thank you so much for watching the entire video. Feel free to share your own stories in the comments. Our current goal is to reach 250 subscribers by the end of the year, so be sure to subscribe. I'll catch you in the next one.